Hi, uh, today we're going to be looking at the Eternal Blue exploit. Um, so there's a module which has been written for this, for Metasploit, and we're going to use that to try and compromise a Windows 7 system, which is a Windows 7 home running uh, Service Pack 1. Um, so, a little bit about the exploit. It was used in the recent WannaCry attack, which um, I'm sure most of you will be aware of. It was originally an NSA exploit, which was leaked um, by the Shadow Brokers, and it exploits an SMB vulnerability, to which uh, up until close to the close to the leak, uh, all versions of Windows were vulnerable to. So um, you can use like Nexpos from Rapid7 or OpenVast or something like that to actually scan systems uh, for the vulnerability. Today I'm just going to use Nmap just to scan this uh, Windows 7 system that we have here. I have Process Hacker and Wireshark running. I'm going to run Wireshark and um, just so that we can have a look at the network traffic when this exploit is actually going through. So the first thing we'll do, we'll run Nmap. I already know that the IP address, well I know it ends with 132, it's just on a local network, um, so it's 27, so we're going to do nmap, uh, an aggressive scan, we are going to, we'll do, we'll scan all ports, and 192.168.27.0.0. We're also going to export this to an XML file, so let's just call that win7.xml and run. Uh, the reason we're going to export it is because we can import that into Metasploit and make things a little bit easier for us um, as we continue. So I'll just while that's running, I'll just get Metasploit booted up. Metasploit running, and we need to wait for that to import the scan. Okay, so I'll just pause the video while this is running, it might take a minute or so. Okay, so that's finished running, yeah, it took, a, it took around a minute. Um, you don't really need to scan all ports or to do um, a full scan like we've done there, really. And we know the system is vulnerable to it anyway, but just to, just, just to let you know what we're kind of looking for here. Um, so we have SMB OS discovery, SMB security mode, so it's the SMB uh, service that, that the vulnerability is with, and that's what we're going to be exploiting. So that's been exported to our win7.xml, so what we can do now in Metasploit is do db import and win7.xml, okay, and that means we can now just go... Um, show services uh, or just services and now we can see the host which is the one one three two all the ports the services um, if if our scan if we scan on a full network we'd be able to just list all the hosts here etc and I say um, uh, the, the open source community did develop the module, the Metasploit module for this, so if you search Eternal Blue, we're going to find this exploit, and that's what we're going to want to use. So, let's say, use that. Let's have a look at what options are required. So you can see here what's required, um, what, what we're missing which is required is our host. So if we set our host to um, 192, yep, there we go. That's great. So that is all we really need to do to um, to get a standard shell. I'll show you just what that looks like first before we have a look at my interpreter. I'm just going to open up local area connection here, uh, start the traffic capture. Not much happening at all at the moment, but if I hit, if I go back and exploit, let's see. Okay, so you see we're starting to get a lot of traffic here. Go back to Cali, and there we go. Command shell session opened. So we have a session open. Let's have a quick look. Who am I? And uh, yep, system. Okay, so we're in. We've got a we've got a shell. 
that's really enough to start doing whatever you want to do. But um, it's generally nice to get a interpreter shell open here, as um, it has some nice, easy, easy to use functionality for when I type an exit. Uh, yes, I support the session. So what we're going to do is get the interpreter shell. We're going to set. Um, we're going to set the shell to payload. Sorry, set payload. Interpreter shell, so interpreter. We'll do bind TCP. Okay. And show options. So now we can see that we have the same stuff here. We've still got the same address in, but now we have payload options set. And uh, the R host. Yep, that's what we want to listen to. L port. That's just a R port that we're going to be listening on. Four 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 and the exploit targets Windows 7. Great. So let's try again. Again, we see a lot of traffic coming in. Go back to Kelly and we have our interpreter shell. Which is great. So there's a lot, a lot of the nice stuff we can do with this. You can see uh, if you just enter help, then um, you'll get a list of commands that that we can try and run. So first thing we're going to do is list the processors running on the Windows 7 system. You can see the processors that we've got running here. There's dump cab from our uh, Wireshark, Wireshark itself. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to mig migrate to the Explorer process. So let's migrate to Explorer is process da, 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 2248. Okay, so we migrate into the Explorer process. And what else can we do? We can get system, let's escalate our privileges. And we could have a look at the sys info if we wanted to, some information about the system. We could grab a screenshot. So um, I saved a screenshot there. Let's have a look. And there's a screenshot. So obviously, we're running Wireshark on the Windows system, and that's what we've taken a screenshot of there. Uh, service has been deleted. Hmm, interesting. Okay, that's fine. Delete screenshot. Um, another thing we might want to do is capture some keystrokes. So you can see up here, key scan start, key scan start, key scan dump. So let's start it. Starting the keystroke sniffer. So sniffing the keystrokes. So if we go back to this system, open up Notepad. I sure hope nobody is logging my keystrokes right now. Cool. Let's close that down. I'm going to save it. And um, let's try and keyscan dump. And there we go. So we can see this came from uh, Notepad was opened. And uh, I sure hope nobody is logging my keystrokes right now. So that's how the key login will work. Um, some other things we can do are run some post exploitation modules. So an interesting one is uh, we can run post uh, windows uh, run post windows and gather and we're going to check VM. Just checking if it's a virtual machine. And yes, it's a virtual machine. So if you were doing something in the wild here, um, if you were actually exploiting some systems, you might want to try and find out whether it's a honeypot, whether analysis is being, um, 
been used or just get an idea what kind of system you're looking at. So we can see that the Windows 7 uh, system is running on a virtual machine, that's fine. Um, we can also run post windows gather credentials and credential collector. So this is getting the user, the users and the hashes on the system uh, and the tokens. So we have here a hash for crystal, the user crystal which is logged in on the other system. So what I'm going to do here is open up Hashcat. Uh, Hashcat will be able to crack that hash for us. So um, we want to set the mode to 1000, which is NTLM basically for Windows or password hashes. Um, we will set the action to zero, and then we're going to put in our hash and. What word list are we going to use? So we've got a user share word list. So the typical one is rock you. Um, I also like hash killer, and there's one from crack station which is good as well. I'm going to set this to force because it's not going to allow me to run it because I'm in a virtual machine. It's going to come with some errors, and you need to hit force. So there we go, we'll force it. Okay, so building cache. Building may take a while. Check if we caches. Okay, so it's just building the dictionary cache from the from the word list that we've put in there, which is a very very big word list. I don't know how many million or billion potential passwords are in there. A lot of which are real real passwords that have been taken from uh, from from real breaches and, and have been dumped. So it's going to crack the hash. And um, while it's doing that, let's have a look at another. Um, post module so we can run post windows gather and enum applications it's going to enumerate for the applications and let us know exactly what applications and what versions of the applications are running so you can see I use this system for malware analysis as well so you have a few malware analysis tools um, or forensic tools, you know, which you know, I suppose multi purpose tools anyway in this kind of industry, and then um, Microsoft Visual C distributables. So it stored the results there for us as well. Um, what we can also do, pretty cool, is run post multi recon um, local exploit suggester, which is going to let us know if there are any other exploits on the system that um, we could use in future so if we don't set up persistence for some strange reason here so we can easily get back in you know set up a back door then um, and the and the user the victim patches the the SMB vulnerability because it was patched by Microsoft um, then we're going to need a different route to get in in future so rather than going through the whole reconnaissance process and scanning and trying to find out what vulnerabilities there are we can just try and collect the local exploits now and here we go the target appears to be vulnerable to this exploit so if we were looking to come back in we might just want to take a note of this and then come back and try and get back in in future through that exploit so that's cool our hash tracking is finished um, and it found that the hash is catsaw cool, which is the password. That's cool. That's gonna that's gonna conclude the demo for the day. What I'm gonna do is shut down. Uh, operation failed. Okay, try to shut down. Uh, okay, uh, I should have really had a look in here as well. But you notice we we migrated the um, process to explorer.exe. Just wonder whether there's any any indication of any of the commands we've sort of been running here. This is uh, there's a lot of stuff in there. I'm not gonna search for it now. It's not, I'm not I'm not too sure whether it would I would assume there will be some forensic artifacts left in here. Regarding what we've done in um, 
to Matt's boy. But yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to close that down. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this demo. If you have any questions, any feedback, anything like that, leave a comment below. And uh, please like and subscribe. Okay. Thank you.